Hi there. I have always been fiercely independent, organised and able to get on with most people I meet. The past few years have been a real struggle. Then I was admitted to hospital where I had an operation and during recovery I started to have flashbacks. Something happened to me and I didn't know who, what, where, etc. and felt terrified, ashamed and overwhelmed with the realisation I had been attacked. I was despondent and didn't know where to go for help or who I could ask. What would they think of me or even if they would believe me? From this point on I was lost and kept everything to myself. My family aren't aware of what happened as I didn't want them to worry about me or our relationships to change. The first person I told was my doctor who suggested I seek counselling and I tried a couple of organisations but this didn't work. I knew I needed specialist support to work through my emotions and barriers faced. I eventually rang RCTN and was put on a waiting list. After 10 months I was given an appointment. The timescale clearly demonstrates how in demand the service is and how many people are in need of their help. Everyday life for me totally changed. No longer was I able to work and support myself. I was totally reliant on the benefit system. I withdrew from friends, social activities, everything and started to isolate myself. The impact was emotional, financial, housing and social and I became overwhelmed at dealing with everyday activities. My mental health deteriorated as the barriers increased. Throughout all of this, I had to attend job centre and explain why I felt I missed appointments, why I couldn't look for work. There's a total lack of understanding by those working in the benefit system, including the medicals you need to attend and are particularly harrowing to experience, especially when there's no confidential space to discuss your personal circumstances. Things started to change when I met my counsellor. This was the first time I had openly talked about what happened to me. It was a blessing to have someone to talk to who would listen, not judge, and offer appropriate advice. Most of all, I was believed. What I do know is that my experience does not define me. I am worthy of loving and caring relationships and I now accept that it wasn't my fault. I have started working towards regaining control of my life again as I realise I've not actually been living my life, just existing and I want to feel safe and confident again and eventually go back to work and socialise again. I believe that all organisations offer excellent support to service users individually, but this needs to be enhanced by increasing partnership working. Information, advice and guidance is readily available online, but a framework of support needs to be created so that all agencies are aware of key organisations who could offer assistance. There should be a seamless referral mechanism across all of the agencies, so there is consistency of support for everyone, including victims, their families and the professionals assisting them, tailored to their individual needs. Government and the NHS have highlighted problems with mental health are increasing, and I believe that policy needs to change to recognise the struggle undertaken on the road to recovery. Funding this process may be an issue, though. Our society is continually falling, failing victims with the blame culture, inappropriate clothing, had too much to drink, etc., placing responsibility on them, when in fact this should always lie with the perpetrator as it was their decision to act. One definition of free will is, I don't have to do anything unless I want to or choose to, This, along with respect, needs to be taught in schools from a young age. Eleanor Roosevelt said, Grow through what you go through. This is what I am doing now. I grow stronger every day with the help I'm receiving now, but there are many people who don't know who to ask for help or where to go. This is so wrong. I'm sure you all have loved ones, 
How would you feel if one of them had gone through a similar ordeal? We need professionals to work with us to come up with a workable solution to stop the unnecessary suffering and distress felt by many. I still have a long way to go, but I am moving in the right direction at last. I've also met some amazing and courageous people who, despite what they've gone through, still have compassion and a willingness to help others. I feel privileged to have met and become firm friends with some of them. I know that I can talk if I want to, but there's no pressure if I don't. We all feel the same. Being together is our safe place. I consider myself very fortunate. Others are not, and we need to change this. Thank you.